very hard to categorize. It doesn't really fit anywhere. The rock and roll scene or the garage scene or the punk scene will never accept me. And sometimes you find yourself in very strange places. It's very serious. It's not funny. The song itself has been finished for a very long time and I think it was just spontaneously recorded for this album. Yeah, and I absolutely love the production. It fits really, really, really well with King Khan's kind of world. trying to, to just find friends and people to help us and, and loan props for the video and, and create the set and, and get all of the necessary elements <laughs> to create the set and the costumes and, and, uh, and get help with special effects and, and with makeup. It's a great video, I'm really proud of it. It's a really difficult album. It's very hard to categorize. It doesn't really fit anywhere. I can't believe it's finally going to be out. I think I tend to get bored very easily, so I try to figure out how to uh, do things that I like with a different approach, such as trying to play a different instrument or just trying a different way to write a song. I'm a little bit afraid to be a uh, stuck in my own cycle and to just do things the same way all the time because I know how to do it. And King Khan is really open-minded and I have been a really big fan of his work like, for, for six years because he played in, in Israel. Yeah, I think he probably is a dream producer for uh, any aspiring <laughs> uh, rock and roller. Your lyrics are amazing. You know, and I think that if we, whatever we can just throw it all together and and start from scratch. You know. Today I was uh, I was thinking about how to recreate stuff live because uh, I've been working with people who basically do things with computers. It was really enjoyable the whole process of just being there and and spending hours trying things and different approaches and um, adding layers and changing the sound of things. I think that when I was a kid, one of the main reasons why I didn't want to be an actress was because you had to follow somebody else's instructions and I felt that there wasn't enough freedom as an individual. I think I could probably act only in, in sort of in condi conditions that allow you to, um, to, to have a lot of expression, something which is not very restrictive. I don't know, I think my attitude towards it changes. Sometimes I think that I could be very good at it and sometimes I think that I will suck. <laughs> so um, maybe I think it really, 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 really depends on the construction of the acting. Yeah, I think at the moment I can only say that I was in a zombie outfit and, uh, and I think the pictures look gorgeous, but uh, I myself don't know exactly where that project is standing. 
an hour long. One it was pioneer's work. It's a documentary. It's very serious. Um, I saw a lot of beautiful ideas. It's not funny. They were a little bit like uh, walking on the moon. It was completely improvised. We had the basic structure of it and ideas for characters. And then everybody that participated had to fill in the blanks and work with just general names, dates and places. The story built itself. So that was the experiment. We wanted to see how we can make a film and not write the script for it. I like to, uh, to kind of to work in as many mediums as, as I can. People have always warned me that uh, you can only do specific things if you, if you have studied it for years and if, if you know exactly how to do it and you do it properly according to the rules and the regulations. And that is something that I couldn't agree with and I kind of just had to um, find a completely independent way to reach <laughs> any of those things. And so I'm not doing anything properly, as, uh, as I'm sure people can hear and see. It's much more exciting, it's much more interesting, because you don't have any restrictions or any rules, and you just, you just follow as you go and see where it will take you. And, and uh, it's very unpredictable. If someone loves you, you don't have to ask. You should know. And so we mm -hmm. learned about mind reading and how it doesn't actually exist. Yeah. And if you want a hug, you mm. say, you know what, I really need a hug right now. Yeah. It's hard though, but to work on that. Can I have a hug? Mm. Real life examples. Um, yes, I'm now editing a documentary about relationships. I started doing it because I um, had a lot of uh, experiences. <laughs> And I was interested in other people's experiences. And I started writing um, a book, which I think has at the moment about 20 pages. So part of the research for it was um, talks with other people and I decided to document them. And I realized that there are links between everything that people said. So I wanted to kind of create a coherent narrative with different people's experiences. My problems with sex. Uh, so you say sex and I say, ooh, I want more of that. Okay, my first problem is that I've got too much personality for sex. Everyone's drunk or, you know, you've had a bit of whatever you can take and it's like, okay, fancy meeting you here. Let's go back to your place. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Mary Ultra. You're boxing. It's been a while. The shows are always different. Oh my god, thank you. It can be in a festival, in a really good stage, and it can be in a theater, and it can be in an art gallery, or in a squat, or anywhere. And it's always a risk because you never know what the place will be like, you never know what the people will be like. And sometimes, um, out of necessity, you, you still have to accept shows that are maybe not the best shows and are a little bit scary, and sometimes you find yourself in very strange places where nobody is prepared and, and, and you have to sleep in really strange places, but that's kind of part of it, I guess. I will have to do Lady Gaga covers. <laughs> I like audiences that are um, enthusiastic and attentive. So in that sense, it doesn't matter what the location is as long as the people are there to listen to music. Well, it's a choice. You can decide whether you want to be honest and direct with the audience, or you can pretend that everything is fine and under control, which I don't like because it's fake. And uh, I think that it also probably depends on the music. And with my music, I, I have to be exposed. <laughs> I think that I always treat the instrument on stage as a veil to hide behind, so I, I always feel that I'm more exposed with, with my body and, and, and my voice. 
So I use the words as the guide in any case, and it doesn't matter what instruments I'm playing because the instrument is mostly a frame. So I think in that, in that sense, it doesn't matter what instruments I play. It could be the piano, guitar, or synthesizer, or anything else. It is really up to you to do all of the main work. You can't really rely on anybody else to do it for you because it's your life and it's your work. And obviously to other people, no matter how enthusiastic they are about it, it's, it's not their life. But it's also a never-ending fight because there's no point where you can stop and say, I've reached all of my goals and aspirations and I don't need to work anymore because I think that never happens. So many things Thank <laughs> you.